yeah, a little bit of probably review, and then we will um, continue when we um, when we meet again on Wednesday in person for advanced students. Okay. So again, uh, this will be uh, brief, uh, but as we go along uh, the semester, uh, you will see also other reviews and also um, new material about how we're going to use those probability concepts and skills and knowledge to, to do Bayesian inference. Um, so the first thing I want to mention is events and petitions. We already saw an example earlier um, about um, doing the breast cancer screening test. Okay, so let's look at the definition of petition and I will talk about that example and then I invite you all to think about other examples as well. So a collection of sets, H1 through HK, is a petition of another set, uh, this curly H. If, first of all, the events are disjoint, and which we write, there is no intersection between any of the HI and HJ, so meaning that there's no intersection of any of the um, any of the events. And also the union of the all of the sets, uh, the entire sets itself is the H itself. So which we can write the union of all of the HK, of K from one to capital K to be the entire um, H, okay? So this is very, um, I guess, mathy in a sense when we write it out. Uh, but like I said, we had that little example just now about how to think about the um, cancer screening, right? So we actually use this concept already. So if you remember, we're doing that base rule calculation in the denominator. We have the joint of uh, cancer and uh, so have cancer and also you have a positive test plus uh, no cancer and you have a positive test and we sum those two up together to come up with our marginal probability of um, having cancer okay uh, sorry having a positive test um, so that is actually example of petition because uh, in the entire population you only have two groups of people they're disjoint uh, so the first group is um, having cancer, the second group is not having cancer, so they're disjoint, but their union is also the entire population. So these two events are actually partition of the entire what we call population and more generically sample space. Okay? So with that in mind, I would like to um, pause and then get you back to the breakout room and talk to your members uh, to see if you can come up with any other examples of petitions in real life or in some other exercises you have seen. Sorry about that. Okay. I think most people are coming back and um, maybe have one or two of you to offer some thoughts about other examples. And then we do one more slide and we're gonna call it a day and resume on Wednesday. Okay. So any examples in real life or other things that you can think of that uh, could form petitions and um, how that relates to maybe if you have any kind of basic inference question related to that, that might be interesting to you. Anyone? So just uh, feel free to unmute directly and um, if I won't see everybody's faces and raising hand, I don't think I'll be able to see. Um, any thoughts? petitions in real life or uh, events that you can think of? Uh, Isabella has a really good one. Sure. Um, um, go ahead. She separated all the days into the days of the week. Mm -hmm. So all the Sundays, all the Mondays, all the Tuesdays, all the Wednesdays. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, a day can't be a Sunday and a Monday. Mm. Right. And all the days have to be one of them. Yeah, great point. Yeah, so I guess if we think about just a week itself, then it's a petition because one of the seven days, uh, well, any day has to be one of the seven days and cannot be the same uh, two days at the same time. And then it's the union of all of the seven days is in a week. But of course, you can also generalize that to the entire, I don't know, infinite number of days in the universe. And then that will be that will be another way to think about it. But but that's a good one. Thanks, uh, Nathaniel, Isabella. And maybe we can take another one from, from you all, anyone? You could also look at voting districts. Um, all of the voting districts within a state comprise the entire state itself, but each voting district is disjoint. Exactly, right. So if we think about the whole state, then each voting district, um, all of them, I should say, form a petition because they are disjoint and at the same time, the union of it is the entire state. Um, great, yeah. So um, those are the examples, which also including the one that we talked about before, they're all examples of like discrete petitions that we're thinking about. Okay, so uh, later on, just like what Koji asked earlier, um, 
when you have um, certain districts say never being considered, let's just say in this case in the prior, then you will never show up in the post year as well. So later on, let's see if we can figure out ways for, for making that work um, as well. So with that in mind, I have one more slide just to talk about petitions and probabilities to link it back to uh, the review concept here. So suppose we do have a petition H1 through HK, and um, we know that the probability of the entire curly H, the big um, population or the space itself is one, and E is some special or specific event. Then let's talk about the three important axioms or probabilities from a probability course that you took before and then make link to how we understand in the Bayesian context. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have this rule of total probability. Okay, so if you have a petition, H1 through HK, then the sum of each of them uh, should be one. And this is once again, because they're disjoint and their union is the entire space. So the rule of total probability, um, make sure that we have the sum of each of the marginal individual probabilities add up to one. And we also have this rule of marginal probability. Okay, so this is definitely related, start to relate to what we know earlier about Bayes' rule, the discrete version. So remember, we have a petition. So let me just like draw a whole um, circle here. And let's just say this is H1, this is H2, this is H3, H4, let's just say K equals to five. Okay. And now we're thinking, so the whole big circle is the curly H. And um, the interest here is now we have a specific event that is not about any of the petition um, event sets over here, okay? We have this E, okay? And let's just say we have an E, which is a box, a rectangle, let's just say, a rectangle, okay? Let's just say this whole thing is E, okay? So the rule of marginal probability is telling us that if I have this specific event E, I want to know the marginal probability of this E, it's gonna be equivalent Two, if you look at the math, it's going to be the sum of the joint of the E with each of the HK. Okay, so what that means, let me use a different color, okay, is that I'm looking at the joint of E and H1, which is this little yellow thing. Okay, yeah, I have so many colors to play with, I guess. And then the other one with H2, right, that's the second sum, a second product. And you do that, um, I don't have any more colors, but you know what I mean, you get all of this. Now you're gonna have five pieces adding up together. Each piece is coming from a definition of probably of the intersection or the joint of the two. And you're summing up all of them that will eventually give you uh, the marginal of the box that we have in the past. Okay. And lastly, uh, to get the marginal, oh, sorry, to get the joint of E and HK, you can actually do the reverse product. Okay. So if I want to get the joint of E and HK, it's equivalent to the product of the margin of HK times the condition of E given HK. So this, we have seen it in the toy example earlier, but this is a more generic case. Lastly, uh, we have our uh, Bayes rule in this context as well. So think about H, especially in our uh, context, think about HJ, any HJ is a hypothesis of interest, okay? And then we start to get some data, which is E or the event. So if now I'm curious and interested in the posterior probability of HJ given E, that following Bayes rule we know is going to be the joint of E and a specific HJ over the margin of, e, uh, of the margin of E. And then of course the joint can be once again written in the product of the two. And then the numer uh, the denominator in our case, the discrete partition that we're working with is once again through the rule of marginal probability because we want to have marginal of E, which will be given the rule, we have the sum of all of the product of the joints. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, we're gonna end today and I will post the slides, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the markdown file as well, the, the all-nighter example file, as well as the uh, lecture recordings after class. Um, so I will also post, um, I think homework one, which is mostly about the review material. And I will still tentatively make it due um, next Friday, uh, but let's see how much we get through. Uh, I'm sure we'll finish the review on Wednesday and then start the new lecture, um, but let's see how, um, how the um, homework and everything goes. It's mostly about the review, so I think you should be able to um, just do, do that by Friday. Okay. All right, um, so I think that's all, and uh, good to see everyone, and for master students, we'll see each other in person <laughs> next week. And I think oh, Laundry Building 105 and everybody else feel free to join virtually and I'll always record and post afterwards as well. All right, have a good weekend.
See you all later. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.